Moving on. Higher education. Why do we need higher education? Alluded to this a little bit earlier. We wanted a learned clergy. And in order for a learned clergy, we had to produce our own. Therefore, we need a school where kids can learn to become ministers. Secondary, but also most of the early colonial leaders spoke of this, we wanted a literate society. That demanded a lettered people. In other words, we need folks in our society who are learned and can impart this knowledge to others or interpret things that the government is saying to others. Enter Harvard. Created in 1636 by a legislative act of the Massachusetts General Court. Has it been built yet? No. It's created in 1636. Has it opened yet? No. It's created. It's going to be in Newtown, Massachusetts, but not too far on down the road. Newtown is changed to Cambridge. Uh, that's because there were more Cambridge graduates in uh, the Massachusetts colony than there were Oxford graduates. If there's going to be a college there, we're going to at least get to call the town Cambridge. It was named for John Harvard. Well, what did he do? He died. And in his will, 1638, he bequeathed 70, 779 pounds, 17 shillings, two pence, and a small library. Has it opened yet? No. He died then, and they, uh, they named it after him. Its earliest purpose, today we'd call that its mission, was to train ministers. The first headmaster at Harvard was a gentleman by the name of Nathaniel Eaton. He didn't rule very long. He was dismissed for a scandalous episode involving the beating of a teacher. This was probably one of his tutors. We'll see on down the road that professors were few and far between. What happened? School closed. It reopens under Henry Dunster. And, and I, time wise, I don't know now. Uh, Harvard died in 38. Uh, if it opened in 38 and then it closed, how long did they stay closed before they reopened? I, I don't know those questions. I do know that the first graduating class of nine was in 1642. Now, if they started in 1638 and then graduated, uh, that would have been four years, 1642. So I don't know whether Dunster took over in 38 or whether he took over in 39. Or may, perhaps they graduated in three years. I just, I simply don't know. I present this next uh, slide just to try and show you that I'm not lying about clergymen and about uh, Harvard being originally a divinity school. There were Yes, people who did something else. But by far, 108, the most graduates in Harvard's beginning years, uh, 1642 on through 1689, were clergymen, 180 of them. 68 with occupation unknown. 27 died young, and the rest divided between other occupations, the largest of which uh, turn out to be public servants. By and large, they are clergy. Other colleges, William and Mary is created in 1693. That's the second college in the New World. Yale comes into being in 1701. Princeton, 1746. 
Kings, which becomes Columbia in 1754. Brown, 1764. Queens, if you got a Kings, you got to have a Queens, becomes Rutgers, that was founded in 1766. Dartmouth, 1769. Pennsylvania is considered to be one of the nine colleges. How many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I got eight there. Uh, founded prior to the revolution. It's got 1779 there. So the revolution is not over. It has begun. Georgia and North Carolina both have claims to being the first of the state universities. So we will wait on those and talk about them when the time comes. Let's go back to William and Mary. Land was provided as early as 1619. We've heard about that. The idea and the driver, Henry Thorpe, died in that Indian massacre of 1622. The idea was brought up again in 1660, but the vote failed. No mission, no population. Didn't have a good enough idea, didn't have a large enough population. This was being voted on in England. In 1693, finally was passed, because as you see, that was the date William and Mary has as its founding date. Uh, one of the trustees who, bore, who voted on uh, the institution made the quote, souls, damn your souls, raise tobacco. <laughs> In other words, I don't care about having another way of producing Anglican ministers. I want you guys to get on a stick and raise tobacco over there like you're supposed to be. It was an Anglican college. Yale was chartered in 1701 as the Collegiate School of Connecticut. Uh, it bounced around for a number of years, holding classes in Saybrook, Killingsworth, Hartford, Wethersfield, and New Haven. 15 years on down the road, so that makes it 1716, the permanent uh, site was established in New Haven. Two years after that, a gentleman by the name of Elihu Yale donated 800 pounds. Uh, as thanks, the institution was renamed Yale in his honor. In 1750, excuse me, in 1745, arithmetic was designated as an entry, entrance requirement. So this is the first university to require a, arithmetic. And as you can see, it didn't come until after a hundred years of the Latin grammar schools being in existence. As soon as Yale required arithmetic, all the Latin grammar schools started teaching it as well. Princeton was founded as the College of New Jersey at Princeton in 1746. It was Presbyterian. Columbia, founded as King's College in 1754. Anglican. Brown, founded as the College of Rhode Island in 1765. Baptist. Does that mean those followers of Roger Williams that were banished from the Massachusetts colony, those heretics, were Baptists? Hmm. Rutgers was founded as Queens in 1766 in New Brunswick, New Jersey. It was Dutch Reform. Dartmouth, founded by the followers of Elazar, I think that's how you pronounce that, Wheelock, in 1669. Wheelock became the first president. That was in the state of New Hampshire, and they were congregations. Pennsylvania, the actual date of the University of Pennsylvania was 1779, but this really goes back to 
Benjamin Franklin's Academy, which we probably have not heard of yet. William Smith submitted a proposal for a new college that would stress practical stress science and practical studies. He submitted that to New York in 1754. New York said no. So it was rejected there, but the idea was picked up by Benjamin Franklin as part of his Philadelphia Academy in 1756. Now, Benjamin Franklin's Philadelphia Academy becomes the University of Pennsylvania in 1779. So this is all part of its heritage. And because it was a, a, uh, a germ in the, in the brain of Ben Franklin, there was no denominational affiliation. It was not founded by a church. It was founded by a human being. 